Wet shimmy with hydro band board. Super easy to do. A lot easier than your traditional shims. A lot cheaper than using two by fours to sister these studs out. This back wall and these two side walls are not flat at all. I'll show you that momentarily. So our solution, our quickest and easiest solution for us is to simply wet shim the walls. So we'll show you how that's done. Again, super quick, super easy, and it allows you to get nice flat and plumb walls with this hydro band board. Here we go. Step one, cut your board. Step two, mix up a small portion of thin set. And then install your thin set mortar onto the timber, the studs, the framing that need to be addressed in order to wet shim and achieve a flat and plumb wall. So we will wet shim this corner as well as the opposite corner. Let me show you how off the framing is and how much shimming is necessary in order to make all three walls flat. Okay, side wall, flat, flat. Let's show you this gap down here. We've got about three quarters of an inch to make up and to shim. Let's show you the top left. Again, about three quarters of an inch. Moving on to the back wall. We have to shim that quarter of an inch, and then you can just check all of these studs. Large gaps here, and large gaps there. And finally, the valve wall. Large gap down there. And a small gap in the middle stud. So we have at least six studs to address in order to obtain our flat and plumb wall. So that tile installation is quick and easy. Now, if you do not address walls that are out of plumb walls that are not flat, you will get a terrible tile installation job, or it'll take a very long time for the installation because you will have to adjust every single tile in order to achieve your flat and plumb walls. Moving on to the left side of the back wall. Now the backboard is ready to be installed. I'm only installing four feet of hydro band board because I want to install my dry pack mortar bed before I pull my measurements for my niche placement. And step three, tap the board down, make sure it is plumb and flat. And then you simply install a few screws to hold it in place until you screw it off tomorrow.
And before we walk away from this wall, we will double check that it is flat from top to bottom and plumb from left to right. All right, let's show you how flat and plumb this back wall is. Now we quickly wet shim the right wall as well as the left wall. We will only have to address these corner studs here. Right wall, flat, and plumb. And right at the top of this level is where we had to make up one half of an inch with our wet shim. All right, this valve wall is flat. Let's install a few screws and hold it in place. It is the next day, the following day, so it's time to screw off our boards. And again, the reason I did not install our backer board on the upper level is because I want to install my dry pack mortar bed and then pull my measurements so that I have proper niche placement for my tile installation. So we'll screw these boards off, install my dry pack, pull measurements, frame the niche, and then wet shim the remainder of this back wall here. You see how the screws go through the thin set without problems and the board is not getting sucked in. It is going to stay plumb and stay flat via wet shim. Okay, it is now time to finalize the wet shimming for our back wall. We have the board cut, ready to go. Dry pack is installed. Our niche placement is where we want it. The niche is framed. The prefab niche is installed. So now it's time to finalize our wet shimming on these studs. Install the last piece of board here for flat and plumb walls. Here we go. Let's install the board, tap it down until it is flat and plumb. Now install a few screws to hold it in place and then we will screw this off tomorrow. The wet shim is complete on this hydro band shower plumb. And 
all walls are flat. The perfect substrate for tile installation, particularly if you're installing a small format such as subway ceramics like we will be doing for this shower. Check it out.